Within a pod in Kubernetes, we can retrieve the secrets stored in Azure Key Vault. We can achieve this using the Azure Key Vault provider for Secret Store CSI driver. Instead of saving our secrets into a secret object in Kubernetes, which is not secure because it's just encoded using base64, now we can securely save our secrets into Azure Key Vault. And then the Key Vault provider will use Azure Active Directory pod identity in order to securely connect to the Key Vault instance, retrieve the secrets, and then those secrets will be saved into a volume managed by the CSI driver and our pod will be able to mount that volume and read the secrets from there. In this video, I show you a demo on how to configure this project into your application. Before this project, we were relying on the Key Vault Flex volume but if you go to the GitHub page for this project, you will see that it's now actually deprecated and it's replaced by the Key Vault provider, which is itself an open source project also available on GitHub, where here you can find more useful links and more documentation about how to use this project. In our demo today, I'll be creating the environment using PowerShell. So we'll create, we'll start by creating the AKS cluster, the Key Vault instance, then we'll install pod identity in addition to the uh, secret store CSI driver into our uh, cluster and then I'll go through the uh, configuration for how to retrieve the secrets and mount them into the volume and to achieve at the end that from within our pod we can read those secrets and display them. So here I have the complete PowerShell script which is available on this file here commands identity.ps1 and here you find more details or the, the full uh, PowerShell script that I will go through it. So don't worry about how long this script is. I'll go through uh, the different uh, blocks in this uh, uh, script. So let's start first by creating the environment variables that we'll be using along this script. So I'll copy this value here and then I'll be relying here on uh, Windows PowerShell. I have already connected to my Azure uh, subscription using the az uh, login command. So once you are connected, now you should be able to um, connect your Azure subscription and then create the resources and manage those resources. So I'll first start by setting up the environment variables for this demo. So the variables here are a suffix that I'm using for naming to get a unique name for my different instances. And then I need the subscription ID and the tenant ID later in the demo uh, for setting up the connection to my account. For that, I'm using here the az command line. As you note here, az account show in order to get my subscription ID and so on. And then for my uh, resources, I'll choose to create those resources into the West Europe location. You can choose whatever other location you want uh, to use. Then here, I'm setting up a resource group name for my different uh, uh, resources. So that would be a concatenation RG with the suffix. Then I need a name for my AKS, the version I'm using, a name for my key vault, a name for my different uh, uh, secrets. So here, note I have a name and I have an alias for my secret. And then a name for my identity. Later we'll be creating that identity. So I started by setting up a name and for it. Then identity selector and provider class name. Those will be used later for setting up the IKS of the Kubernetes objects. And because typically with uh, AKS, you typically create an ACR resource. So here I have uh, added an ACR uh, to show you how we can attach it later. Then uh, we have here the option for either to use an AKS with a managed identity or with a service principle. So you can set that using a flag to say true if you want to use managed identity or false if you want to use a uh, service principle. Once we have our resources are set up, now I'll move to the next part where here we'll go to uh, create some resources into Azure. So here I'll go to this part, let's clear this and start from fresh. So I'll start first by creating the resource group for that I'll be using the variable names that I have defined earlier like the resource group name, the location, and then I'll go to create an SCR 
uh, resource. I log into my uh, ACR here with the uh, exposed token and then I'll move to creating an AKS uh, cluster. So here because I have used I have chosen to use uh, the managed identity. So from here I I have added uh, a flag saying enable managed identity which will use the service principle. If I don't want to use managed identity and use service principle I, instead, I just uh, remove the flag and by default the az aks create uh, command will use the service uh, principle. That operation will take a few seconds. Let's wait for it. And while waiting, let's go to the Azure portal. And I want to show you that here, actually, even from the Azure portal, if I go to create an AKS uh, uh, cluster, where you go here to authentication, you should be able to see also those two different options, whether to use service principle or the managed uh, identity, which is, by the way, the recommended way to, uh, to use AKS. Once the cluster is created, now we'll go to connect to our cluster using the AKS show. We need this because later we'll deploy uh, Helm packages into our cluster. So we get the connection using here AZ AKS get uh, credentials. Great, so now we, are, we have created the AKS cluster and we are connected into that cluster. Let's now move to the part where we'll be dealing with the uh, key vault. So from here, I'll go to create a key vault instance and then I set some uh, passwords or some uh, uh, secrets into this uh, instance. So first one is gonna be um, log a database login, that's gonna be the, with the value OSM, and then a password for my database, for example. And then I want to retrieve those secrets from Key Vault into my pod running inside AKS. Once that's done, now I'll go to move to install the Azure Key Vault provider for secret store CSI driver. For that, I'll be using a Helm in order to do that. So I'll start by creating a new namespace in my cluster, and then I'll go to uh, download the Helm chart, and then install it using the Helm install command. So that will install it into my AKS cluster. Here it tells me it's successfully deployed. And from here we can see the containers are already uh, created creating. So now if I try to get the pods again from that namespace, now it shows me those pods are running. The CSI driver actually will install some CRDs into our Kubernetes uh, cluster. So we need here to configure a class called the um, secret provider class. So from here I'll paste the content for that uh, class, which is the one into here. So note how it's using the secret store API in order to create an instance of the secret provider class that contains information about the key vault and about the uh, method that we are using in order to authenticate to key vault. So here we are using pod identity. We have set that into true, but note we have also some other options. If you don't want to use pod identity, you can use the managed identity or assigned identity uh, in order to give you access to your key vault instance. So here, pod identity is one of some few available solutions for you to connect to Key Vault. Once we connect to the Key Vault and we provide the name for, for the Key Vault instance, we can uh, state what are the secrets that we want to retrieve from this Key Vault instance. And this is the, uh, an important part of this object here, where here we are mentioning the name of the secrets we want to retrieve. So first secret is secret one name and the secret two uh, name. Both are of type secret, but note we can also retrieve the keys or the uh, certificates from Key Vault. I have installed that this class into the uh, AKS instance using the cube control create dash f then the content of that uh, file and here it tells me that was uh, successfully created in my cluster. Now we'll move to another section and here we'll go to give our cluster the right access it needs on the resource group. So here I am accessing the identity uh, client ID for my uh, uh, cluster and I'm giving it actually two roles to access roles. One is the managed identity operator. The second one is the virtual machine contributor. Once those two roles are attributed, as we see here, we can continue our scripts where here we'll go to uh, install the Azure Active Directory pod identity. 
So let me do that here. Again, we'll be using Helm chart because that's available in Helm chart and it's easier to use uh, Helm. So here I am adding the repo into my local machine. Then I install that project using Helm install command. It tells me that was deployed successfully. Once that's deployed, actually that will uh, create some pods on my cluster. So here you see there is actually three pods deployed. If I try again to get the pods to see whether those are running. So those pods will manage the uh, identity from my cluster because here I want to use uh, an Azure identity, that identity would have access to my uh, key vault. So using pod identity, I can give access to that identity to my uh, Kubernetes resources. Great, now those are running. So that project is ready to be used. And now what I want to do is that I want to retrieve the identity that was created with AKS. Remember, we're here we have chosen to create an AKS cluster using the managed identity. That will create an identity in addition to our AKS resource. So from here, if I go to the resource group that was created, if I go to the one that have the uh, resources, you can see that here we have a managed identity that was automatically created because I just selected the uh, to enable the managed identity. I want to retrieve this identity here in order to uh, use uh, its ID and my configuration. So that's what I'm, I'm gonna use into here. So if I'm using the managed identity, I retrieve that existing identity using the AZ resource list, then I query the type that uses the uh, Azure assigned identities, I'll save the JSON into a variable. And if I'm using an AKS with a service principle, that means the identity will not be created automatically. In that case, I can go to create a new, um, I can go to create a new identity using the AZ identity uh, create. Note here when I am trying to get the identity, I'm using a while loop. That's because sometimes uh, it gets, uh, we need some delay. Uh, between the creation of the complete creation of the resource and retrieving that from within the resource group. So I'm retrying until I get that uh, existing resource. Now this identity will be used in order to authenticate into Azure Key Vault. So it needs actually to get read access on our Key Vault to be able to retrieve the uh, secrets from there. So what I'm going to do here with this command is that I will try to create an assignment, az role assignment create uh, command, and I assign the reader role into my identity principle ID over the scope of my uh, key vault ID. Once that's attributed, now my identity should be able to access that key vault. So the identity now have access to the key vault, but it does not actually have the right access to read the uh, secrets from the key vault. To do that, I'll use here the uh, another command to set a policy inside key vault. So with this policy, I'm saying that here, I want to assign a policy into my key vault for the secret permissions to be able to run the, uh, the get uh, request against my identity. Once those permissions are given into here, I can go to my Azure uh, subscription. And from here, if I go to the Key Vault instance, which was created in the same resource group as my AKS uh, cluster into here. So if I go to Key Vault, and then if I go to where I have the access uh, policies, we should be able to see that here, now we have a policy with assign it to the identity that we are created with the AKS cluster and that one have uh, the get access to my secret. Note that here we have also some other um, permissions that you can add. Now this identity that have access to the Cube Vault and to my secrets will be used by my AKS cluster. It will be used actually by the Azure Active Directory pod identity uh, component. So pod identity needs to connect to that uh, Azure identity. For that, it will use some uh, CRDs that were deployed with the Helm chart for the pod identity. And those ones actually with um, the two objects, Azure identity and Azure identity binding, we can connect to the identity using its ID and the, the client ID. And then 
we can bind that identity into a resource into uh, Kubernetes. Once we apply those two objects, they will be uh, created inside our IKS cluster. And now from our pod, we can access this identity in order to retrieve the secrets. So let's move to the last part of this demo where we'll be uh, testing if we can now get access to those secrets. For that, I'll create a sample uh, pod that uses an Nginx container and then I'll mount a volume for that container. So I'll do that using by uh, deploying a, a pod that uses the Nginx container and then I'll mount a volume using the CSI driver and that driver actually will use the secret provider class that we were create that we created earlier in order to get access to the right uh, configuration for the identity and read the configure the secrets from key vault so those now uh, at this point if we get our pods running we should be able to see that the um the secrets are now saved into this CSI driver. So let's uh, see if that if that is really true. So here we can air, either deploy an application and read from that volume, or we can also run a command from inside that uh, Nginx container. And that's what I'm going to do here. That's the easiest option to, to test it. So to here, I'll go to run cube control exec from inside the um, nginx pod and here i'll list what are the objects saved into there so here it gives me those two aliases and then when i try to read the first alias or the secret uh, uh, alias it will give me the value for the database login and for the database password so with this we we, we have achieved reading the secrets securely stored into Qvault by using the Azure Qvault provider for CSI driver. That's through using the Act Azure Active Directory pod identity and the CSI driver. I hope you liked this video. Thank you.